Hey guys, welcome back to our channel, The Upper Hand. Today we're going to be talking all about the manual tool dexterity test, sometimes known as the Bennett manual tool dexterity test. This video is part of our ongoing uh, series of videos covering standardized assessments for the upper extremity. So today we're going to be talking about exactly what is assessed during the Bennett manual tool dexterity test, how to instruct your examinee when they're taking the test, and how to time and score the Bennett. I'm going to give you all these instructions while you're watching a time-lapse video of me actually performing the assessment. So let's jump right in. Hey guys, so this is the manual tool dexterity test and as you can see it comes with four tools. Typically it's a flathead screwdriver, a small standard wrench, a larger standard wrench, and an adjustable or crescent wrench. So you're going to make sure you have all these tools on hand before beginning the assessment. Um, you want to make sure that the nuts and bolts are on the left side um, with the, the bolt heads on the inside of the assessment with the, bolt, the bottoms of the bolts sticking outwardly just as is pictured here um, and make sure that all the nuts and bolts are tool tightened. Now for the top row you'll need a combination of the adjustable and the larger wrench to tighten. The middle row you'll need the adjustable and the smaller standard wrench and then for the bottom row you will need the adjustable and the flathead screwdriver. To tighten these. So this is the view that the examinee would have with the nuts and bolts on the left and then they're going to disassemble them and end up moving them to the right. So this is the view that they would have. So you're going to instruct the examinee that they're going to start with the top row of nuts and bolts and break them loose with the tools and then use their hands, their fingers, to finish disassembling them. They must remove all the nuts and bolts from the top row completely before moving on to the middle row. Then they'll break loose the middle row disassemble them with their hands and then move to the bottom row. So one row at a time from top to bottom all nuts and bolts must be removed from the left side then when all the nuts and bolts are removed then the examinee takes the smallest nuts and bolts and starts on the bottom row on the right side and they begin to reassemble the nuts and bolts on the right side. Again beginning with the bottom row you want to make sure that the nuts and bolts when they move them to the right side are flipped around so they're going to have to flip around the nuts and bolts to where they're sticking out towards the right and the heads of the bolts are on the inside of the assessment again. So you'll get a clearer view of that in just a moment when you watch a time lapse video of me performing the assessment. So they're going to start reassembling on the bottom row uh, with the nuts and bolts and then make sure they're tool tightened again. So tell them to reassemble all of them, tool tighten them and then move on to the middle row where they'll reassemble then tool tighten each one then to the top row where they'll reassemble and tool tighten each one of them. So let's jump over to a video of me performing the assessment and I'll give you a few more tips about how to administer this test. So as you can see here, I've started with the top row on my left, breaking them loose with the tools, then using my fingers to disassemble all the nuts and bolts. Um, make sure that you're uh, noting that there are washers involved as well. So I'm completely removing all that. Then I start to break them loose on the middle row with the tools first. Once they're loosened, then I can use my hands um, to finish disassembling them on the middle row. Then I'll end up repeating that same procedure on the bottom row. Again, on the bottom row, you'll need the flathead screwdriver and the adjustable to loosen all of these. And then when I go to reassemble, I'm going to start on the bottom row, working my way upward. And I'm going to make sure to flip the nuts and bolts around. This is what I was talking about right here. I'm going to flip it around so you can see how they're facing the opposite direction. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble all these with my hands first, hand tighten them, and then come back through and tool tighten each one. So each row needs to be tool tightened before the examinee moves on to the next row. Tighten, 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 tighten. Next row. I'm going to tighten all these. And when we move to the top row, um, you may see me drop a nut during the assembly portion. Um, notice that I don't bend down to pick it up, I just keep going. Remember that because we're going to throw in a little tip about that at the end of the video. So right there I dropped it, didn't get it, I just kept going. I'm going to go ahead and tool tighten. 
and as you can see as I approach the uh, last combo and I finish tool tightening the last nut and bolt that is when the examiner would stop the stopwatch as soon as I tightened the very last nut and bolt combo. Okay guys so we wanted to leave you with a few helpful tips. Um, number one being when you're timing the, the Bennett make sure that you start your stopwatch or timer as soon as the examinee picks up their first tool and you stop the timer as soon as the last nut and bolt are tightened on the opposite side. Uh, number two, make sure when you're instructing your examinee that they know that this is a time test. Let them know that this is an assessment of their dexterity uh, using everyday commonplace tools. So when they know that this is a time test, you should you know, reinforce that they should work as quickly and efficiently as possible. And number three, you may have seen me drop a piece earlier when I was assembling some of the nuts and bolts. Um, let the examinee know in your instructions before they start that if they drop a piece, they should not leave the test to go get the piece that they stopped, that they dropped. Um, let them know that you, the examiner, will go retrieve that piece and bring it back to them. They should continue to work. And so if they drop a piece, they should not stop the test. They should continue to work as quickly and efficiently as possible. They, let them know that you will bring the piece back to them um, so that they don't have to leave the test. Number four, let them know as well that if they need practice before the test starts, before you even start the timer, let the examinee know that if they'd like to try one or two of the nut and bolt assemblies just to get used to the test, that is fine um, and that is permitted according to the in official instructions for the manual tool dexterity test. And then lastly, when you, the examiner, are recording the time for the test, typically um, I record it in minutes and seconds. So whether you're putting this into some documentation, a note, a patient note, or into some type of software, make sure that you're recording it in minutes and seconds. So we hope this information was helpful for you today. Whether you've never administered this test before or whether you needed just a quick refresher, I hope that um, this gave you the confidence to be able to use this test in your practice should you ever need to. Um, we want to continue to bring you guys relevant content that is useful in your practice because we want you, the therapist, to have the upper hand. So stick around for more videos like this and we'll see you next time. Hey guys, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video. We hope you learned something today and that this was helpful to you in some way. So you know our goal for this channel, the upper hand, is to give you guys the upper hand as you seek to better understand conditions of the upper extremity and just all topics related to occupational therapy in general. So please take a second out of your day, make sure you like this video and subscribe to this channel so that you can be sure that you're going to see all of our upcoming videos. Thank you guys so much and we'll see you next time.